Welcome to the Boston Art Podcast. I am Brian Huntress. I'm Theodora Earthworms. And this is the episode. I'm holding it this time? Yeah. Ooh. Cool. What do all these buttons do? Don't push any of them. Shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you fuck with them, it'll just fuck, with, fuck up the recording probably. It'd be annoying and stupid. That's fair. Um... So we were discussing types of sticker designs and advertisements. Yeah. Specifically promoting an idea or a project. No. Promoting a project. Our Not project. really an idea. Promoting project. the podcast. The Boston Art Podcast. Because... Boston Premier Art Podcast, where we talk art, culture, and philosophy. Because one thing that they don't know, because we don't have merch, is that we did print a lot of merch, uh, like sticker designs and shit. Mm. And... It's funny because we actually didn't print them to give them out as merch at all, but we printed them as just a way to get the word out. I'm a big fan of, you know, guerrilla marketing off- offline, and I think one of the best ways to do that is to just print stickers and just put them on shit. Yeah. Places where it's okay to put it up, don't be a piece of shit about it, but, you know, just put fucking stickers up fucking everywhere. And, uh... Get into the global consciousness. It's about, um, I, I, what I call it is, uh, om- omnipresence. Yeah. Being everywhere at once. Everywhere you can look to see a sticker in your ecosystem. Every, every time you look at a pole or a sign or wherever it's covered in stickers, yours should be there. Yeah. And everybody will know about, at the very least, the sticker. Here's one for, like, South Shore kids, but have you ever seen Scarecrow Hill stickers everywhere? No, actually. It was a band from, like, the... I think they're from, like, the 2000s or something that I've never listened to, never seen in person. I don't know anybody in the band, but they were on top of their sticker game, and it was every fucking where the whole time that I was growing up on the South Shore. And anytime you would stop at a stoplight, anytime you would be, like, on a walk and you'd be passing, like, telephone poles or whatever, there were Scarecrow Hill stickers everywhere. And everybody knew about them because they were everywhere. Mm. I don't know how much that helps their, like, play count, but... Right. I think of them every time I think of this concept. And I'm not endorsing or disparaging this this brand, but, like, One Gig, for example. Yeah. Skate Shop at Downtown Crossing. They have had, like, a infinitely omnipresent everywhere sticker all over Boston yeah. for, like, years yeah, pretty, pretty For the on last, top of like, that. two years, they were just... And that I don't think that that brand, the shop itself, was responsible for that. I think that in skate culture, it's, like, a pretty, like, cool thing to do to get... Like, you'll see people sticker slapping and putting up stickers everywhere that are stickers that have absolutely nothing to do with them. Yeah. Like, people will just put, like, DGK stickers on shit. Yeah. Or, like, just a, a shop repping, like, they're... Like, they'll just put stickers of their local skate shop on shit because brand loyalty and skateboarding is a very is very weird. Yeah. And very different than other industries. And people, like, really, 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 like, like to rep shit. That's a pretty cool specifically thing, Specifically products. So, for a time, or maybe even still, one gig was, like the most successful shop during the pandemic Mm. and I think talking out of my ass that motherfuckers were just hyped to be putting their stickers up everywhere yeah and so they did and so the uh which perpetuates the momentum aggressively and we wouldn't achieve that effect with the podcast because we're not like doing a street team angle or trying to get people to do that like we're not giving out stickers to get people to put them up so that's like maybe it's, we should I mean that'd be cool I would like be interested in doing some kind of uh, situation where we try to get the stickers to our listeners mm. you know if somebody want, like maybe I don't know you know what I was thinking might be like a cool thing in the future like I'm really over Patreon yeah but I wish there was a way that we could have supporters or people supporting the show in small ways and we give them stickers That'd be cool. You know? Yeah. That would be a good, uh, because they could do what they want with them and be supporting us and get like a little something, like a little something. Yeah. But also Patreon is a curse. 
it's a cur it's a curse and a and a and a blight yeah. on your on your psychological makeup. Patreon is a deal with the devil. It is. It really, it really really is. So I'm not I'm not like uh, exactly chomping at the bit to start a Patreon for this show, just because like you know of the of the difficulty of doing that. But in the future, you know, I think it would be really nice to have, you know, small benefactors of people who want to see us succeed, of yeah. which I'm sure there are some people, you know, that want us to do good and want us to have the support that we need. So hopefully yeah, we'll can, be able to do that in the future. You guys can, like, Venmo me if you want in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you feel like pitching in. Right. So that would be cool. Um, yeah. Um, I don't fucking know, bro. Mm. Oh, man, I just took a sip of this water, and it was literally like taking a sip of like a, like a cup of tea with no tea bag. Ew. Why? Was it car water? By that I meant I just took a sip of hot water. Oh, I thought you meant it tasted weird. No, I just said, I would just try to say... A hot cup know. of tea with no tea bag. Yeah, I took a sip of hot, hot water. water. That's really funny, yeah. actually. Yep. I thought you meant that it tasted like plastic or something. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really taste like plastic. It's just hot, hot bottled water. <sighs> Throwing back some microplastics. <sighs> dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air. What's up with you? With me? Yeah, what's up? Uh, what have you been up to? I never know how to answer that question. People ask me that. Um been reading uh you've been listening to Mitski lately no fucking no oh my god so yeah that's a thing I he guess. has just been lying to everybody and and, and claiming stolen valor dude i don't fucking know being i a just Mitsuki fan. <laughs> i do people ask me questions like that especially when i'm like tired or if i'm like at work especially They're like what do you listen to or like what have you been up to lately i'm just like i don't fucking know like my go-to is to be like oh well, you know i've just been here and they're like haha but live yeah the, like what else dream yeah, basically. And then they're like, but what else? And I'm like, nothing. And the conversation just ends because I suck. But um, somebody asked me the other day, somebody that I'm friends with, and I'd already been talking to for like a couple hours because it was part of my job. Like we were just stationed in the same place. Got it, got so it, got it wasn't it. like a weird, like hadn't seen you in a while thing. It was just like, whatever. Okay. And they were just like, what kind of music do you listen to? Like I've never actually asked you what music you like play the most on Spotify. I got my first What's COVID test at the CVS. Oh, that's fucked. So they asked you what kind of music you're listening to on your Spotify? <laughs> yeah, and I was like... I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. And they were like, you don't know anything that you listen to? Like, can you name, like, like just one artist? Like, what's just, give me, like, just a sample. Like, what genre? Like, any just hints? Said, and I was like... You should have just said Post Malone. I just said Mitski. Because it was the first thing when they were like, what do you listen to on Spotify? What genre? I'm like, I don't know, Mitski? Because that's, I don't Guitar know. Guitar music. I've listened to, like, three Mitski songs, and I liked them, but... See, it, I don't know. I don't like Mitski that much because, like, I like Mitski as an artist and I like her music, but it just brings me back to a time that, like, it just reminds. It's sad girl music. Well, it just reminds me of being 19 mm. and hanging out in like the college of the Fen, in, like the colleges <laughs> of the Fenway, and like going to basement shows. Do you listen to Post Malone? Not really. I'm looking right now at my recently played, or my liked songs on Spotify, and it's not anything that I would have, like, expected, I guess. My top, <laughs> my top genres, you know how it gives you those little catchphrases on your liked songs for, like, what that playlist is like? Glitter pop. It says... Sad guitar. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> Knife rap. Indie. Angry. Chill. Indie rock. Melancholy. Ethereal. Spooky, psychedelic rock, angst, folk, sensual, rap, indie pop, silly, and pop. Yeah, that is exactly what kind of music you listen to. I like how angry and angst are both in there. Ethereal, silly. Did you already say that? <laughs> yeah, what is silly? What, what's on my like songs like, that maybe are like silly? Maybe like Young Gravy. Crab Walk, Party in the Hills, Bitch Boy, The Oozes. Hey, so I've been fucking with Dolly Mini recently. I don't know who that is. No, not not the artist, the AI robot. 
Oh, to uh, Lee, Crayon, yeah. Cray Aion. Cray Aion. I love that shit. So I've been using it in a very weird way. Like, so it turns out, so to give a little backstory to anybody that doesn't know, is that it's an AI robot that has been fed uh, like millions of images, like just general images and art and photography and shit like that. And it's been trained to use short phrases uh, that you can type into a search engine and then it will then produce an, an artistic image based off of the phrase that you put into it. Yeah. And the real pro version of it isn't available to the public yet. It's just only available to a select few of people for some reason. Yeah. Um, which we can talk about too, but there's like free versions that you could use that are like lesser, less powerful versions available online and shit. So I've been fucking with those. I kind of love the janky ones because they give you the funniest images ever. And they are very like very off. Like they don't like the like. What I love about it so much is that it's AI that's trying to produce human images, but in but it's doing it in such a freaky primitive way <laughs> that makes the images so scary yeah like i was typing in like the most heinous shit into the into the ai generator thing like i was typing in like child melting on fire <laughs> dog covered in bugs dying and it would just produce like just the most demented images and it was just making me feel sick and weird and, it, and I was drawing from them as well and that was pretty fun. The thing that's funny about the AI too is that you can tell it to do like anything in terms of like gore and shit and it will but yeah. I tried to do um, fairy wearing headphones smoking out of bong the other day Really? and it said no. They are oh, like that's no that's gross. We're not doing that. See, that's like it's that's so strange because I was typing in like straight up violence shit and it Me was too. like totally fine. Yeah, huh. it was like no drug use, thanks. And I was like, okay, whatever. Well, the thing is, that's really interesting about it is that the reason that the the pro version isn't publicly available is because part of their website and mission, like thing that they're talking about is that they're not releasing the full version yet, so that they can design it so that it can be responsibly used. Like they're trying, which is such an interesting phrase to use with like AI generating art imagery. Yeah, because, responsibly used. Well, if you think about it, if it's an AI that can create hyper realistic images of literally anything that you type into it, you could literally, like, people could make like criminal shit. Like, people could make dark, fucked up shit. That's true. You know what I mean? Or gore, or pictures of like naked celebrities. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, people will, like, if it, had, if that kind of technology existed and it was, like, freakishly, futuristically accurate and it had absolutely no fucking regulation at all, it would be, like, a weapon. That's true. Which I guess would be sick say, in a way, besides the crime. Well, I was going to say that already exists with Photoshop, but you do have to have a certain skill set to be able to do that. Right, that's a very limited thing. Like, if it was just available to literally, like, anyone... Yeah. <laughs> like, that would be fucked up. That would be pretty foul. You could just type in, like, Bill Clinton shooting a dog, and it would just exist. You just have a photorealistic image of Bill Clinton shooting a dog. Do they, do they have a timeline for when it's going to drop? No. But uh, I don't think they do. You can. I signed up to be on the waiting, on the waiting list That's cool. to get it. I doubt that I'm going to get it, because obviously, because they seem to only be giving it to prominent... Uh, influencers, artists, yeah, AI, AI roboticists, like people like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, which is, I understandable, I guess. But what's really cool about the pro version, though, besides like all the dark shit that we were just talking about, is that one feature that's really fucking crazy that you can use is that you can type a descriptor onto the end of it, where you can do, you know, eagle riding a horse on the moon but after that you can type uh like disney style oh that's cool or watercolor <laughs> or something and it will produce something in a specific medium like in a specific illustrative style that's cool yeah so 
you can find like demos of it and things other people have made and like people put like really like I don't know like there's one that's been going that went that the Dolly official website was promoting that was an astronaut riding a horse in space and like this fucking like beautiful art style <laughs> and it was just fucking sick like just a sick image that uh what a neat thing to think about it's really fucking interesting because like i mean if you were a graphic designer or you were designing things for brands or even just your art it would be stupid to use something like that and just be like the guys like can you give us like a mouse like with a pen or you know what i mean you yeah. just you and you just sent them some shit that you got from a generated thing <laughs> But what would be cool is being able to type things into it to create reference imagery and to create concept art. Yeah. And then for you to use your artistic, you know, you know, skill set and Build experience. Yeah, to, to use those things as reference images and concept images. That is cool. That's a neat thing. How did you feel about um, using the reference images from the Cray AI one? I really liked it, actually. It was... Well, what I really... Something that I've been thinking about a lot recently is that I just really feel I feel really limited with like the way I draw people and faces and portraits and things recently and I'm kind of like I don't know like I feel like I just need more and uh, like I need I need more XP right now yeah and more information and more uh, I just need yeah I just I just have needed more shit anyway and what I usually do when I need more information to make myself better is I will study specific artists or art movements or I will watch documentaries or I will go to museums and when I go to the museums I will draw pictures of the paintings that are there mm. and like that type of shit makes me better but there's also something that's really exciting about the idea of being able to uh, just uh, have a computer just literally conjure a image that that has never existed before and will never exist again yeah. out of the fucking ether and to just draw that image because one thing that's really fucking crazy about AI image generators is that they also aren't producing the same images twice like if you search something on the Dolly fucking mini thing if me and you search the same phrase we're not getting the same results so that was something I was actually curious about because on the we could cray test that, I guess, crayon but... one, I have tested that. And it was and happening? It, yes. It was creating the same image, but that one is a lower tier yeah. thing. Like they're not photorealistic. It's not like it's like a meme generator basically. Yeah. So I'd be interested in testing that with other ones. Like one that I also really like that I recommend to our listeners to try out if you're trying to just draw portraits uh, or just do some face studies is there's the website famously known pretty well known just called this this person does not exist and it's an ai generator ai image generator that just creates a photorealistic literal just photo of a person that is just a mashup of just millions of photos of people like it just makes a person yeah like it'll just make like a like a like a random white guy <laughs> or like a baby or like a like a woman like That's with a suit insane like it and they don't look wacky or freaky or anything like that they look like linkedin pictures <laughs> you know what i mean so that's that's cool I, i've been using that a little bit recently that seems really good for face references it is because you know many of us you know something that i've done for years that i'm even hesitant to talk about because it's like like borderline copyright infringement sometimes is you know you just google like old man face mm. or like woman blonde face Curly, curly hair and use or, that yeah and, or you'll just use some version of that or use that to create your own image I feel like that's what everybody does that's what everybody does but it's an imperfect way and it's risky it's professionally risky sometimes because if you did commercial work and you were using reference images that didn't belong to you mm. even if it was transformative content you still run the risk of a copyright infringement which yeah. would be you gotta make sure your really... reference images are creative commons right so what if we lived in a fucking world where you just had a fucking robot on your computer that just created random royalty-free fucking images yeah. that did not exist for anybody but you and it just was like... Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that would be a huge resource. Right. That is literally resource. like magic. That's magical. 
<laughs> that's like a wizard. That's wizardry. That's cool. That's a really interesting thing. So, I know everybody is uh, in our community and in the art world and stuff doesn't like stupid tech people. Who are you talking about? Or annoying about? computer people. It's like crypto bro adjacent. But this one will affect you and it will be sick. Even if you don't like technology and stupid Twitter people. This isn't a dumb Elon Musk thing, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, this is a sick thing. Yeah. So, I know that I'm... I know that I'm sympathetic to, to idiot tech people a lot. But this isn't one of those times, guys. Just saying. <laughs> I feel like I have that rep. I have like a one foot on the dark side. Not really, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know who thinks that about you. But... I feel like I've been made to look that way. Like every conversation about NFTs and cryptocurrency that oh. we used to have. Well, NFTs and cryptocurrency are a different thing. They are the dark side, I for sure. I don't think tech is the dark side. Yeah, but tech people yeah. are usually it's like a like a the circular Venn diagram situation. Yeah, I getcha. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? Are we going really far north right now? Uh we're going westward around Boston to north to like northish shore. Weird. North ish, north ish, I meant. This is probably why it felt like such a long drive. Yeah, Next time we went. it would be faster without traffic if we went through Boston, but that's not, you know, real a real thing. Do you hear how much I'm yawning? This Are you is, tired? No, it's the sound. It's what I was telling you about when I'm in the car on the highway. White noise. It sounds like the white noise machine. I never used to sleep with white noise or with fans on until I met you, and now I get sleepy. On the I'm, a, I'm a stupid baby, and I sleep with white a white noise machine. Stupid baby. Like a like a like a baby that sleeps with white noise. No, it's cute. <laughs> hey, you know, it's addicting. Like, I don't know when I started to do that, but there was a time where I didn't use white noise to sleep. And once I started, like, it's like, it's like, like crack. Like, it just, well, it's an irreversible thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's really common for neurodivergent people, I think. Because, Is it really? Yeah, because it kind of gives you something to focus on, which makes it easier to not have a ton of thoughts Thinking around your head, you know. Yeah. Like when I don't have something to center me when I'm trying to sleep, or like. Mm. I don't know. I've been like that since I was a kid, where just actual silence just makes me unbelievably stressed out. Yeah. Like, cause silence isn't silent to me. It's like when it's silent, I can hear my fucking pulse. Like I can hear like ringing in my ears like I can like I can hear everything when it's exactly. silent yeah and I'm un, I'm not interested in, in hearing those those uh minuscule subtle sounds <laughs> I would prefer to hear anything else white noise yeah I used to think that like I think it's kind of like it's it's a double-edged sword like it's a it's a hard line to walk when you are somebody that cannot, that just is not down with silence. Because for me, how that translates is I end up always like listening to podcasts or listening to music or listening to just some fucking, some like laundry TV type shit. Yeah. Just something is always, I'm always consuming something audi audibly or visually while I'm doing shit. And, like, that isn't... I feel like that is pretty harmless. But it, it hits a point where it's, like, I'm not even, like, having normal fucking thoughts anymore. Yeah. I'm just, like, only having media, like, content thoughts. And not, not in, like, a productive way. In a way, like, where I'm just... It's... Uh, musicians might identify with the kind of idea of you listen to an artist so much that when you try to write, you're accidentally mentally writing in that artist's voice. Interesting. That's something that a lot of musicians will talk about. Or similarly, like... if you're looking at somebody's art too much, you might start just drawing what they draw. Yeah. Which I've isn't a horrible thing. Anyway, but I feel like I've had that experience writing poetry that if I've been listening to a lot of poetry or reading a lot of poetry by an artist with a particular voice that I really like, suddenly my writing for a couple of weeks will be like that. Hundred percent, yeah. It's real. And I feel like that is, that's whatever, that's a common battle with art, 
but when it comes to just your life or like how you love and interact with people it's just like if that's being infected by like a podcast you listen to like what the fuck is going on yeah like this is this is weird we're in weird town <laughs> we're in weird town you know that's me well I think it depends it, the bleed over between the things that you consume and the people you spend your time with I think is natural but like we're going to be influenced by the things that we spend a lot of time focusing on that's just why you have to be particular about what those things are like I think there's something to be said about like the concept of hate watching something or like engaging with content because it's entertaining because it's so dumb like if that's like 100% of your content consumption you are going to be lowering your own like output oh if you constantly watch shit content well you are what you consume if you're not even if you don't agree with it or you don't necessarily feel impressed by it or anything it's not like it's going to lower your like intelligence but you're also not giving yourself any input or anything to challenge you which means that you're just going to kind of you fall at the median you know the guy from the mountain ghost john darneal had an interesting quote on a podcast one time where he said that whatever you consume you will test positive for yeah you know what i mean and especially in your own creativity that's a really creepy way to say that but i is. agree it's, yeah, <laughs> it's literally just it's in your in your diet like fucking vitamin food and pills yeah so it's true it's true yeah so and it's funny when i look back at to times when i was a little kid i think i even did that then because you know when you're a little kid you know maybe you like will talk like you'll pretend you'll just be at school or with kids other kids and you'll be talking like a character from a show you watch yeah and pretending to be that character even though nobody knows you're doing that yeah or nobody you know what i'm saying you're just acting like a goofy kid yeah you know i i feel like that's similar or when i was a teenager i like didn't even i didn't do anything but read books yeah like i just read books me too like i had no not like i just was yeah that was my primary form of media at that time and i don't do that anymore i haven't read a book in like two years probably which is fucked it's kind of kind of cringe to admit that but it's true i just don't fucking read the way i used to i really don't well you know what's interesting about that well I think... actually i lied i read a book last year what book did you read <laughs> uh it was a short biography of the artist mark chagall oh cool i think you told me about that yeah it was kind of cool it was it was very dry it wasn't really like that well I also think something to be said about that though is like I don't know I don't want to label it an ADHD thing maybe it's just a neurodivergence thing but I resonate with that a lot like I used to read voraciously when I was a kid growing up and then in adulthood I don't really like I can't read now but I think what we were talking about with like silence and how that causes racing thoughts if you're reading a book, you can't also be listening to music or playing a podcast or something. Like, yeah. You have to just read the book. And sometimes that can be really fucking hard to do if you're somebody that has like multiple narratives going in your head all the time. But I found that driving and listening to audiobooks, I read voraciously now because yeah. I listen to books instead. I'm just a little baby and I don't want to pay for the fucking Audible yet. I'm going to uh, break down and do it Just one day. log into my Audible account. What the fuck? Uh, it's okay. I'll, I'll get my own eventually. I'm an adult. Yeah, well. I can pay for my own fucking thing. <laughs> just being a dumbass. But you know, what, right. you know what's something that I also think is true, but is like a little like cringe. What? I keep saying cringe. I don't know why I keep saying that today. Cringe, bro. But something that when I used to read books, uh, I also one thing I used to do all the time when I was younger is I would read books drunk and high, mm. and that was easy. And I used to like read like I because that was something. Like, I, this isn't really, like, a, it's kind of a weird part of when I used to, like, when I wasn't sober and shit, is a lot of that time was spent reading books, because I didn't really have friends. Yeah. So I would just be doing drugs and shit and reading, and, or, and when I stopped doing drugs, and was, like, you know, in programs and stuff, I still, cha- I chain-smoked cigarettes. Yeah. So I would be chain-smoking and smoking and smoking and smoking while I was reading. Mm. And now... At this point, for like the last three years, probably. Is or, it like a I don't like smoke. For smoking? I don't. No, it's not a trigger. It's that I don't. It's that smoking and drugs, in a lot of cases too, and alcohol, is a crutch 
for when you're anxious or when you can't sit still oh. or you don't know what to do with your hands or you're yeah. picking or you're you're doing you're you're fucking stressed out or you're socially anxious like that's a multitasking smoking thing. helps you yeah. like that's that's the part that's why fucking smoking is so horrible is because it's, it really helps yeah. when you're anxious or when you're stressed out or you don't know what you're doing or you're or you're like really trying to focus on something and you can't smoking a cigarette helps you yeah or maybe for people weed smokers or people who drink a little bit in the audience they probably feel the same way I relate to that right it sucks and the that's about, that's why this shit's so fucking addicting well the thing about yeah. weed that really sucks that I'm glad that I never really got into smoking cigarettes because I feel like the only reason that I was able to kind of not smoke as much as I used to and like kind of get over it is because it kind of came to a point where I had to choose between what, what I was focusing on because you have that same instinct where you want to do something with your hands and your mouth and you're like trying to focus at the same time and there's like this stupid like romantic thing about smoking a joint while you're in the bath reading a book or something like there's this mental image of what it's going to be like and then you do it and you're fucking stupid all of a sudden and you're shaky and anxious and you think your teeth are falling out and you're not reading the book you're just like like dying actively in a bathtub yeah you're like like naked and afraid yeah yeah (laughs) Um, so it sucks. Am I going bald? Yeah, and then the next day... I should day, get out, like, calipers and measure my forehead. Oh my god, I literally used to do shit like that. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, measure the distance between my eyes and, like, just stare at the mirror for, like, an hour and a half. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, all, everything that I made for that period of time was a self-portrait, and there's a reason for it. But, um... <laughs> I mean, this I guess there's pros and cons. But the thing is, it got to a point where, like, you can't be hyper-obsessing about, like, every minuscule thing that crosses your mind and also be making good work or focusing on something you're reading or, like, challenging yourself with new concepts. It's like putting on, like, like looking through a microscope all the time. Like, you're not going to be able to comprehend the bigger picture at the same time. And trying to do that to facilitate comprehending a bigger picture more easily is actually illogical. So that kind of helped me cut back a little bit although it took me like a year and a half to get to that point because it was actually a choice between like maintaining the lifestyle I already had or learning and growing a little bit more because it was bad it was like all the time the pandemic really was the tipping point because before that I had like a job and stuff to do so I wasn't always high all the time but then there was suddenly months where it didn't matter so it was like you know what I mean (laughs) right and then yeah. it started to matter again, and I was like, oh, not a big deal. And I realized it was, like, kind of hard. <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> and it's like, for me right now, I don't I don't smoke or vape or anything these days. So I feel like I'm, I'm a lot less anxious, and my life is better. And that, it's a net positive that I don't smoke or, or I'm not addicted to nicotine. Yeah. But... I there it is true that there is a deficit or there is some missing piece to like to the way that I deal with anxiety or overstimulation now. Yeah. Where I it's it's an imperfect system. There isn't a button to push. Yeah. When I feel that way, which was cigarettes or something. And now so I think that there there may maybe like I don't like it's just like I'm like doing like mental like gymnastics right now (laughs) explaining why I don't read books or something basically oh it's okay but like I I kind of wonder if like that is like like I think that's why it's easier to just like like the fact that there's just some stupid shit that I can listen to that's the same thing for literally like four hours yeah is fucking crazy like that didn't exist for like what do you mean Like a podcast. Like, I can just listen to something, not have my own thoughts for, like, fucking hours. Yeah. It's not drugs, either. You know what I mean? Like, I could just... I could just clock out of my own fucking brain. Yeah. And just draw. Or just make shit. Or, like, clean shit. Or whatever the fuck I'm doing. Or, or like, something I used to do a lot. I don't really do it anymore because I don't have working headphones. But I used to listen to podcasts while I skated. Yeah. So it was weird as shit to listen to podcasts while you skate. I used to do that too. See, I think that could be a really good thing. I think the only double-edged sword on that is what content you're consuming. Because if you're listening, like I was saying earlier, if you're listening to shit, Daily Wire. Just kidding. Well, I mean, seriously though, like if you, if you're just thinking of it as like a tool to distract you while you're doing other shit, look at that license plate. That's so weird. Mm. (laughs) Mmm. Just a bunch of M's. I like that. Um, but if you're 
using it as just like background noise, it's tempting to do something like, I don't know, just like hate listen to like Trisha Paytas content or like watch only like E! Entertainment TV from like 2002. And, like that can be fun sometimes, but if that's all you're consuming, I feel like that could be like maybe not even saying that it's a negative thing, but think about the impact that has on your day to day life versus doing the exact same routines, and the exact same thing while listening to a podcast about like or listening to a range of things, really. I guess maybe not hyper focusing on one thing is the main part. But if you're listening to audiobooks, or if you're listening to like psychology or finance podcasts or things that will like actually better your life and give you information that you'll use or just shit that you're interested in and like artists that you genuinely appreciate or podcasts that make you happy. I think it contributes to your general well-being more than just having static or something that's just kind of like, like, I don't know what the actual adjective I'm looking for is, but the way that I think about some of this stuff is like psychologically abrasive. Like if you go out and you're going to like, what's another example that would be similar? Like not something that's harmful necessarily, but that like, if you go out with your friends every single night for a week and a half to the point where you're just tired and you don't want to do it anymore, and it's actually grading you down, yeah. like, it's not necessarily bad, but it's too much. And I think that with something like that, it can be really hard to mainter- maintain those boundaries with your psyche of making sure that what you're consuming is stuff that you would actually consume if it were another format. Like, not all junk food all the time, you know? Yeah. But that's the only thing that I think is wrong with that. Otherwise, I feel like it's just harnessing like understanding the way that you can focus the best and leveraging it which I think is a good thing <clears throat> yeah yeah it's definitely weird it's not really clocking out of your brain if you're not like doing drugs or drinking or something it's hyper focusing your brain like angling it towards what you want it to be doing right nah no, you're right what a weird thing yeah like I was trying to work on music the other day and I was getting like kind of stressed out because I, like, wanted to, like, listen to music or, like, a podcast while I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> but. Relatable. Like, my brain wanted to do that, <laughs> but but that's not uh, a thing. Yeah. I've been trying to get my house in order with music the last couple weeks. Yeah? Yeah. I, uh, I just have kind of, like, I have something I need. Basically, hey, fuck it. Uh, there's, I either <laughs> need to delete all of my recorded music and start over or what? I need to just post drop I just need to drop albums do you have a lot for yeah, I probably have albums? like five hours of like demos and songs and shit what the hell like I have a lot of songs and shit that I just I don't know I just stopped kind of like caring and stopped putting shit out and like stuff I don't know don't fucking delete that shit. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to delete it. I'm just saying, like, spe- more specifically, like, I feel like something, a trap that I've fallen into is just writing shit, recording, making the, making all, of, you know, and going through all of the production and stuff. Yeah. And then just being like, whatever, I'm done now. And then, yeah. and then forgetting I ever even did it. That's really And then, like, finding all this, like, like, just, like, making a whole EP and then just being like, yeah. <laughs> this sucks and then, just, and then just not ever doing anything with it Yeah I feel like I get in phases like that with my sketchbook Where shit just gets stale because I didn't finish it Yeah And I think it's because I'm not really like in a musical environment anymore Yeah Like I have tons of friends that are musicians and stuff You know And like You know but I'm just not like I guess I shouldn't say that I'm not around musicians But it's not I'm just not really in a uh, Like in a music community like when I was like you know with like the old scene and like the old studio and shit I was it was it was basically like a music in incubator yeah like it was like a musician incubator where we were like all helping each other out with the things we were doing and working on shit and giving each other feedback and we all were involved in each other's behind the scenes shit in a lot of ways yeah and when I left uh I guess there, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I just stopped. There was less pressure to be doing shit, I guess. That makes sense. So, I don't know. Interesting. I will fucking know, bro. I feel like having a social network that has similar interests to you can be really, really helpful. Yeah. Like a huge asset. So that completely makes sense. 100%. But it's not really like, I don't know. 
I don't really care though because I've like I'm like very solitarily creative. Yeah. Like I work completely fine, if not better, by myself. Yeah. You know that doesn't mean I don't like to collaborate or that I don't collaborate with people in a lot of ways or something like that. But it's just more so like I can just make stuff really, really fast in the way I want to by myself. That makes sense. That's true. I've seen you do it. Yeah. So. Well, I guess if I saw you do it, I was in the room, but I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> but me and you have a relationship where we can and in, work independently together. I really like that. Yeah, and that's because we're very close and we don't, we're not embarrassed by each other. Yeah. Or we're not like, you know, I know that you're not going to like give me like weird shitty feedback if I don't like, or butt into what I'm doing and I'm not going to do that to you. Yeah. And if you give me critical feedback because I want that, I know that I can rely on it because I trust you. Yeah. And the same with you. I feel that way too. And I know that if you give me critical feedback, it isn't like, like secretly actually just some mean thing that's supposed to hurt me. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, cause that's what a lot of people do as well. They just like, I don't know, just that's take hell. some like pot shot dig at you. Pot shot. Are you merging? Oh my God. Uh, no. That was scary. Did you think I was just going to cut somebody off, like, belligerently? You were very close to that car, and I thought you were going in. I was just confused as to what exit I was supposed to be taking, because it was an A-B situation. Oh, fair. Also, this truck that has an open back and is full of stuff, not a fan of that. Yeah, that's actually pretty weird that they're, uh, that they're doing that. Creepy. Anyway. Um, no, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with all of that. I think it's really fun sometimes. That's why it's... So, so I guess in a sense, in a, in a positive way us making stuff together is as good, if not better, than making stuff alone. The whole. Versus, but that's because we have... Nurtured that. Yeah, we have, we have, we've worked to have a, a trusting and loving relationship where we feel good being around each other. Yeah. So. You should definitely not share example. your creative space, whether you're in a band, whether you're an artist in a studio, or whatever the fuck it is that you do. Do not share space where you feel vulnerable with somebody who's going to make you feel like shit. Yeah. It's a and, bad move. And it's an abusive intellectual relationship. And dude, I'm I'm a sensitive person, you know? Same. Like if somebody I cry fucking a lot. if somebody sucks, like or somebody just has all always has negative energy or they're always fucking complaining or they're always picking shit apart or they always have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. That re- it really rubs off on me, dude. Yeah. Like I'm like it really I'm not even saying like positive good vibes only bro like that's not how I don't vibe with that either but I'm just saying like for me it's like if somebody really is just walking around with like a black cloud yeah that they are creating like I that really deeply fuck oh, it fucks with me dude I have such a like I'm a borderline kind of a bitch about that too like in my personal and creative life, I have a very low tolerance for a lack of transparency. I didn't used to be like that. Maybe I'm overly like that now, but the way that I think about it is like, I don't know. If time is money, then friendship is business. (laughs) (laughs) Like, if you are going through something or if you're negative sometimes, it's just because you're being honest about how you feel, that's completely different. Like, just say what is going on while it's happening or if you're having trouble doing that even articulating that you're having trouble doing that that's completely different but if you're gonna be like a fucking like loser and you're just gonna complain all the time and you're gonna say no to everything and you're not gonna ever explain why and you're gonna be aggressive and argumentative leave just go to therapy and go away (laughs) get fucked freak (laughs) but um i mean maybe okay maybe saying that that's how i am my personal life is a little bit untrue like i mean it is kind of true but like I have a little more empathy if you're just somebody I'm friends with, if you're going through some shit. But if we're working on a creative collaboration and I'm putting down money and I'm putting in my time and I'm moving my schedule around to make this happen and you're not doing at least the same amount of work that I'm doing, we should be challenging each other and I should be holding myself accountable to meet where you are. And if that's not happening, I don't have the time. Yeah. Like, you're only... You're only young once. I'm trying to establish a career by 35. <laughs> LOL. Get it together. Life. Fuck life. So interesting. Let's flip this for a second, though, because I feel like I'm being a bitch right now. What would you say? <laughs> what would you say to somebody that 
is in the opposite position that maybe isn't the one being taken advantage of but is the one that is kind of like a, a sad sack dude okay when i say sad sack or somebody who's negative i don't mean somebody who's sad or yeah. somebody who's has depression or bipolar or anything like i'm yeah. not talking about somebody with problems i'm talking about like like okay here's a like put a finger down if you fucking <laughs> if you see your friend perform uh, up on a stage and they do so fucking good and everyone's proud of them and they killed it and you're sitting there like that fucking ass they don't even deserve that like yeah like i worked so fucking hard out. and nobody like i'm not on that stage or yeah, no. put a finger down if you fucking i really like this format or i don't know like <laughs> if you're like if you i don't know if you character assassinate everybody you fucking talk to yeah. or you see somebody in your community or online or whatever doing something in your in your universe and you have to you can only feel better by telling yourself why that person's actually a piece of shit can you, and why they actually don't really deserve that can you what, elaborate a little bit on the term character assassination character assassination is to put it in a very you know to paint with broad strokes is just like is like when you character assassinate it's something that is usually done privately but might be done in a group mm. but it's when you're just looking at somebody and you are invalidating them and picking them apart and pointing out all of their flaws and ex and like all this stupid shit even if they don't deserve it or have given you no cause to do that yeah it's like just looking at someone and being like you're fucking like your haircut looks fucking dumb like you don't know what you're talking about you're probably lying yeah like the way you're pronouncing it, it's all stupid like I don't know. Like, what do you really know? Like, everyone, the, like, everybody probably agrees with me. Yeah. Like, these people are all fucking idiots if they're listening to this person. Yeah. Or, and doing that in a group is, is an even larger offense because Thank you're you. doing what one might call gathering the troops. Yeah. Which is where you are just, r like, shittily rallying people against somebody. Like, you're just like, yeah, that person's a, I think that person's a dweeb and a fraud and they're not actually that good at what they do and their good reputation is maybe undeserved and it's not because they're a piece of shit or they're like hurting people or any valid reason it's just because i kind of don't like them yeah and i think that they're kind of a, a loser yeah that's character assassinating i'm not talking about like if there's somebody in your community that like i don't know is like racist or is some kind of like evil I don't know like if somebody did something fucked up and people like I'm not talking about some special yeah. situation like that yeah because that's mean. like there are different like rules and different procedures maybe I think there's I also something know, to be but... said too for because I think where it does get sticky it's a little bit of a gray area in the middle is when somebody has done something that is kind of foul but isn't something as severe as like hurting somebody well, maybe, I don't know. Hold on. Maybe it's more something like, this person was talking to me and they were wicked fucking rude. And I've known them for a really long time and nobody has addressed this with them. And instead of talking to them about it, like, I'm not gearing myself up with my close friends to talk about it. And I'm talking to them. I'm talking to a large group of people that all know this person. Some of them might not know them that well. And I'm just going to talk about how shitty they are with some kind of convincing evidence, but not do anything to address that with this person in this relationship. And I'm going to do that for years. Because <laughs> I see that shit all the time in art scenes, especially with people that have known each other for a long time. And it, when that's happening, even if you have good evidence for why that person is a piece of shit, you have an obligation to talk to your bandmate or your like collaborator or your friend, and like, yeah, work through that. And if they still haven't addressed it, then you're not wrong. Like you're not a piece of shit if you've tried to talk about it and nothing is happening. Like maybe that's just a, co a relationship that's fraying. You're right. I'm gonna but I'll oh, go ahead you also have to be responsible and accountable for the things that you're going to say to other people about anyone. I'm going to step into hot water here too and say that you need to, you need to be real with yourself and step out of your stupid fucking little bubble and actually ask yourself if the thing that you're mad about or the thing that you heard about is actually that bad. Yeah. Like, and like, cause there, there are some irredeemable things. There are some crimes that we just can't look past, but I could probably count on one hand how many of those there are. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Maybe two hands. But, like, like it's like if somebody, I don't know, like if some random person you know was once in a band 
and they were a real douchebag and they were an asshole and they were overly critical and they treated everyone in that band like shit and that was fucked up and whatever. I don't know the whole story. You, and you weren't even there? Shut up. Like, it's like, maybe that person was a dick, but it's just like, is that, like, maybe they changed. If they're still a dick, like, I don't know. I'm just saying being an asshole, being a dick, or I don't know. Is that, is that irredeemable? Yeah. Is that like the worst fucking thing in the world? And it's like, if that didn't actually happen to you, should you be talking about it? Yeah. And it also is really important to like find out like what that really means. Like if somebody was saying things like being like wicked transphobic or like that's being, on the like, list of two hands. Yeah. Like doing something that's like mean, making fun of a person that like something that somebody can't help or something that somebody shouldn't have to help. That's one thing. That's more than being a dick. But if it's just like this person, like didn't come to band practice a couple times and didn't text us first or like said they were going to pay for this thing. And then we all put in this much and they only put in this much. And it happened like six years ago and you don't personally know anybody involved. You just heard it from someone else. Like maybe you should just kind of chill, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> so the podcast episode listeners will have no idea what we're talking about right now, but I've accidentally drove us. Uh, yeah. Are we at an air air, base? air force hand, Hanscom Air Force Base. I GPS trying to go to a Dunkin' Donuts, but... Is it in the air base? I don't know. I'm going to just tell the guy that I was trying to go to a Dunks and it took me here. Can you U-turn right here? I guess. I feel like I shouldn't go in there. I don't know what... Just tell him so we don't look creepy. I don't know. No, I'm turning around. Okay. Fuck the, fuck the Air Force. Oh my god. Ah. Sorry, everybody. Bye-bye. I don't know why it wanted me to go that way, but so I'm not gonna. All right. Shout out to all our, our friends in the military. <laughs> I don't actually really have that many friends in the military. I just wanted to go to a Dunks. Now I got to find a new one. I, I wish the GPS had specified that that was one, like an inaccessible Dunkin' Donuts. They never do. So um, where the fucking yeah. shit, where the Fucking fuck do I go now? I'm sorry. I'm like totally disrupting this uh this recording. It's okay. Kind of, kind of uh, I'm kind of fucking fucking up the vibe. <laughs> sorry. You need a coffee. We're back. Yeah, I do. Need one. Um, but no, yeah, I guess to summarize to what we were just talking about in a more succinct way, because I feel like we got a little bit messy at the end. Yeah, it's just I like, was talking a little shit. No, it's all right. I mean, I think it's valid. The thing is. You, okay, th I'm just going to call myself out here because I have been thinking about the way that I've acted in the past. That's kind of why I've been a little brutal here. I'm not trying to subpost anybody, just to clarify. But I, personally, in the past, have been the kind of friend that if I found out that my friend was wronged by somebody, I'm in the dirt with them on that. Like, I will fucking hate whoever you hate because they wronged you. And I don't necessarily think that that was, like, the worst possible motivation in the world, but it was stupid. And that's not how I operate now. And it's like, I can't stress this enough. Like, I do, do not mistake us. Like, we're not talking about, like, a person that commit hate crimes or is, like, transphobic or is some fucked up person. Like, we don't fuck with that at all. Yeah. And if people are like that, we're not going to fuck with them. But, like, if somebody, like, was a piece of shit one time or, like, you had two, you were friends with two people and they were in a relationship and they broke up and you didn't know who you should still be friends with, we're not talking about that either. Or, like, somebody was mean to somebody. It's like... I mean, fuck. I'm confused. I fucked up. The last one I feel I like... I fucked up the sentence. No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> there are bad stuff. I'm not talking about, like, oh, dude, he committed a hate crime. He committed a hate crime. It's no big deal. Like, it's not what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not what I fucking mean There's a all. difference between <laughs> legitimately being a piece of shit and having some drama that happened a couple years ago with people that you still know. It's like, whatever. Like, there's a bunch of people that I fucking hate that I do not want to fucking fuck with or work with again. But if somebody asked me to my face, like, like, oh, yeah, I got this thing coming up with this person. Isn't that cool? I would be like, yeah. Yeah. Great. Do it. Like, if that person was, like, a neo-Nazi murderer, vampire, I'd be like, dude. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah. But, like, but the people I hate, coincidentally... Like, whoa, whoa. Trying to get 
trying to reconnect to iPhone. Good thing we don't use iPhone to record anymore. I just literally panicked because I thought we were recording on the phone. We're not. And I was like, dude, we've been connected to... We've slightly upgraded. We slightly upgraded. We don't have the Bluetooth problem anymore. We're using a $30 handheld recorder. Yeah, we're getting um, there. Anyway. Rolling out the big bucks, But baby. it's like the, the people on my shit list that I'm mad at and that I hate or something... Yeah. They're not like neo-Nazi murderer evil people. There's actually none of those people on my radar at all. Yeah. Not in my life. I don't have any fucked up evil people in my life. That's actually a good point, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, not people I don't like. Yeah. Not people I used to like. Like, it's just, they're not even here. Not even part of the equation. I think the real thing about all of this, too, is really... Like, the, a good rule of thumb that might be a little bit better than us personally um, quantifying every way you could be a piece of shit in a row <laughs> might just be to... Think about how much your own ego is involved in your conversations you're having with other people. Like, if yeah. somebody's coming up to you and they're, like, recording their album with somebody that you don't personally like because of some drama that happened a couple years ago, or, like, somebody's doing an art collab, they're doing, like, a t-shirt run, or they're putting their work in somebody's store, and you know the person who owns the store, and they pissed you off, and you don't really like them. If you're gonna fucking rain on that innocent person's parade and say, like, oh, yeah, well, I don't know, I know that guy, and they're a piece of shit, like, what you're telling that person first of all, is not to take an opportunity that might be good for them. Because it really doesn't have anything to do with their business practices, you're assuming, in this situation. Like, if it does, maybe warn them. But Dude, if it doesn't, like, don't be a dickhead. And, and I've learned my lesson, man. I've listened to people who have said stuff like that to me and watched them turn around and go work with people like that. Yeah. Because it served them. Yeah. But I was the guy that was like, I'm going to take a stand personally alone and no one's even going to know about it. <laughs> and I'm going to lose 200 bucks that I could have made. And here's the thing. There's a difference between... Great. There's a difference between roasting... Lost my life. Sorry, go ahead. It's okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with setting healthy boundaries for yourself. If somebody's being a piece of shit to you, they don't have to be committing hate crimes to be somebody you ice from your life. Like, you do not have to hang out with people that suck. Like, that's just a baseline. You can cut whoever you want out of your life and your business practice. But expecting all of your friends to do the same thing is not really a mature reaction a lot of the time. Yeah. And right. I think it can get sticky when it comes to things like art and music because people are so passionate about the things that they do and the things that they make and you want every show to be like a party and all the people that you hang out with to all be friends. But you have to remember also that this is business and like I personally am not going to blow, like if I had like an art gig where I was gonna hang pieces and it was gonna be like 500 bucks, but you didn't want me to do it because the gallerist was your, like, ex-boyfriend? Sorry. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Asterisk. And it's like, yeah, I... I That's not a specific situation I, I was know, in, by I, the way. It sounded I, like I was adding somebody, but... Nothing that we've even <laughs> said has been related to a specific... Yeah. Uh, to real life. Public service announcement that I'm never gonna call you out on your bullshit on my podcast, because that would be really you know cringe what? of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I think's hilarious about this? What? I'm making fun of myself. Like, our, like, baseline for what, like, a terrible person is is, like, Ted Bundy, Kyle Rittenhouse, like, evil, like... I don't know. I just think it's funny, like, imagining a universe where, like, the music scene is just filled with, like... I don't know. I don't know. Never mind. I'm not going to go to that bit. Okay. <laughs> but it's just kind of almost... Never mind, actually. Anyway. <laughs> well, I don't necessarily... Like, the guy that owns the music venue is, like... And never mind. Never mind. Because <laughs> that's true sometimes. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. anyway. Shut up, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think it's more likely... Like, there are a lot of pretty harmful actions a person can take that won't necessarily mean that they're, like, the boogeyman. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that might be a better way to phrase it. Yeah. But... I don't know. We don't need to go over what all those things are right now. Yeah, I think we crushed it on that segment. <laughs> I think that was good. Cool. I don't know. How did we even get there? Because I think we were talking about the idea of being, you know, a sensitive person and, or just somebody that really wants to be in a good place. Taking or, accountability and responsibility for the people and the, around you and the content that you consume. Like, what you surround yourself with is what you will become. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. how we fed into that. Taking taking a, a real audit of the people in your life and the things that you were watching and listening to. Yeah, because to kind of, like, bring it all together, I guess, 
what we're talking about right now with all of that like stoking old drama and whatever like protecting your friends quote unquote from somebody that you think is is trouble right like those aren't necessarily bad motivations but what sours them is that it's really your ego speaking like you don't like this person you don't want them to be in your scene you don't want them to succeed so you're going to talk shit out the side of your mouth and you might not get in a fight with them or you might not like call the cops on them but you might tell people that they could actually like financially and like emotionally benefit from being friends with or working with that they suck and know for a fact it's not going to get back to them but you're going to say it Bro, I'm gonna lead. I'm gonna lead by example here. Sometime, like right now too, and say that sometimes, like there are people that I think are fucking annoying, or that suck, or that aren't authentic, or something. Yeah. Do something good, and I do feel that that twinge. Yeah. I do feel that kind of like, like that meh, 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 like you know yeah. why that person's a stupid piece of shit. But it's like it is important. Like it is important for my humanity for that person's humanity and the health of, of my social network for me not to run my mouth and be like that person's a fucking loser like they're not yeah. they didn't even fucking work they just fucking they just failed upwards fuck them you yeah. know what I mean like that's not cool for me to be like that for me and for, for everyone else yeah cause but I'm, I'm not I'm saying I'm not perfect I do feel it though well I it's do it's there too. yeah I, it's a pretty normal thing to feel I feel like especially if you had personal beef with somebody sure yeah but the thing is if you think about that like the actual energy that you're putting out into the conversation you're having with that other person or into your scene like do you want to be the person that's known as the weird dude with beef with this other person you guys like don't say hi when you see each other at the no. show and like like what the fuck nope, shut don't. up grow up also been that person don't want don't want to be that don't want to be on that, that vibe i hate that shit that's yeah. so weird um it, it's just weird it sucks and it's also like by the time that you're over it like, okay, the alternate scenario. Somebody tells you that somebody that you have a recent drama with, a recent argument with, or some issue with, has this thing. They're in a new band. They're playing this show. They're going to be at this event. And you're like, oh, that's cool. And you change the subject to talk about something else. Now, you haven't put negativity out there. If it does get back to that person that you know about it, there's nothing bad that you could, they could say that you said. It kind of puts an olive branch out into the world. And maybe you don't even want that. You're going to hold your boundary on not being friends with this person. But you're also not the guy that's bringing everybody else down. And you didn't just spend 20 minutes talking shit and making the other person you're talking to who's completely uninvolved part of this beef. Because you know what's another thing too is that if you do talk a bunch of shit about somebody to somebody that is like a, a well-rounded nice person, you might set off a chain of events you did not mean to set off. Because, okay, so the person has just received this information. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Joey Baloney at the, at the, at the just shit house DIY venue or whatever is a douchebag and a piece of shit. And, and this band's playing there. So, I don't know. That person might do due diligence. Cancel their show. No, they might, they might ask around. They might uh, be like, hey, dude, like, you know, on the low. But, like, I heard, like, Brian was saying, like, that, you know, Joey Baloney is like a fucking you know what I'm saying yeah. and like there's a chain of events here and it's just like even though I thought I was like being like real subtle yeah and like you know what I mean I'm I'm not yeah, it's caused kinda, this massive issue it spreads like a fucking like a cold dude yeah like it you know you and it's gonna come it's gonna come back around and then at the end of the day if you're really gonna be honest most of the time no matter what that person did to you Imagine you woke up one day and you had like a bunch of texts from your friends being like, yeah, this person and this person and this person are now asking around trying to find out why everyone thinks you're a piece of shit. Like, that sucks, man. Like, and you're the person that rained that down on that other person. Like, they probably don't deserve that. Maybe they might not. Fuck all that shit. And even if they do, do you really want to be dealing with that for the next like two weeks while everyone's running their mouths about it? Nope. Fuck that. Fuck all of that. You've made a lot of good points this episode. I guess so. I'm really good at telling people to fuck off and shut up. That's what I do on this podcast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. What is they this? sell peaches there! Oh, uh, we can... Let's pull up and grab a couple peaches. A hand-painted sign that says peaches. We'll, we'll, we'll get peaches. Will you tell me what the what the time is on the episode? Um, one hour and five minutes. Oh, it's beautiful. Nine seconds. Okay. Um, I'm getting kind of... I'm kind of on edge. Yeah. And prickly. Time for a snack and gas and to go swimming? Yeah. We're done with the episode? I'm satisfied with the content that we have provided to this episode. Satisfied? I think we've dropped some knowledge, expanded some minds. Maybe. We'll see about that. We've done our part today. We've done a part. We've done a part. (laughs) Done a little bit. Ooh, feel that heat? I'm going in this fucking place and getting the coffee. 
We can keep recording if you want, but I need to fucking fucking go. You're not getting gas right now, are you? No, I'm not. I'll get gas when oh, we leave. That's not that bad. I thought it was 560 don't for worry, regular, but it's worry, diesel. Don't worry about the gas. Okay. I don't know how to do this. Turn it all right, off. You, we're all set? Yeah, I guess so. Boston Art Podcast. Thank you for listening, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Boston Art Podcast is an independent DIY production by Brian Huntress and Theodora Earthworms. The information contained in this episode represents the views and opinions of the original creators or our guests and does not represent any institution, organization, or business. Find us on Instagram at Boston Art Podcast and tune in for a new episode every Friday. Thank you for listening.